Hi everyone, this is Michael Hoffman from C3 Communications. Uh, and I'm here today with Jeff Brooks, who writes the blog Future Fundraising Now, which is a terrific um, regular uh, blog about fundraising that I've come to rely on and get a tremendous amount of value from. Um, I'm, I have Jeff here today because uh, we produced a white paper at C3 called uh, The Future of Fundraising, and, um, and I thought we should talk because I think there's many things in what is in our white paper and what's in Jeff's content that line up, and there's things that Jeff emphasizes and different things that we emphasize. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that today. So Jeff, I think that um, if, tell me if this is right, but I think, you know, one of the things that we put in our white paper was that the future of fundraising looks a lot like the present of good fundraising. And that, you know, there's a lot of technologies and things will come and go, but um, there's some fundamentals that really stay the same. Yeah, absolutely. And, and actually, that's why I chose that as the name of my blog. Because if you read my blog, you'll see I'm not one of these shiny object guys who's always trying to lead you to the next best thing, but that the best practices stay the best practices. Now, that's not to say that you ignore new things, but there's nothing that's going to make it easy, and there's nothing that's going to change human psychology. And if you keep those two things in mind, so you'll be smarter about the changes in technology as they come along. I think that's a really great point. So some of the things that we talked about in terms of uh, the technologies that you know that we've pointed out, you know, one was about mobile, um, another was about video. What do you think of those technologies and how they're actually changing or adjusting fundraising tactics? Uh, today. Yeah. yeah, well, the, both of those things are are, um, we, are important, they matter, and you better get good at them. And we know that an increasing percentage of email readers are reading on a mobile device. And so if you've set up your emails or your uh, landing pages and things like that so they're unreadable on a mobile device, you're in trouble. It's, it's like you're sending them direct mail with four-point type in it. You know, that's just not smart. Uh, so, you know, be there, be with it. We also know that uh, videos can be very persuasive. Um, I'm a little more skeptical of that um, because it's hard to jump from a video to a call to action. It's possible, but it's difficult. So, um, but you know, be smart about videos. Know that short, emotional videos can have huge impact on what your donors do. I think that's a great point, though, about tra the the transactional moment, and I think. You know, one of the things that I talk a lot about with video is that um, there's a lot that often happens with people before that transactional moment. And you need to use video where video is effective. And if yeah. somebody has decided to donate already, don't get in their way. Give them that form, whatever it is, right away. So yeah. think about really where in the stage is this donor and this cultivation, and then, you know, use the right tools at the right time. Yeah. Yeah. And, and a lot of, like, when you send people an email, the response to that email is a tiny fraction of what you can expect from direct mail. That doesn't mean there's a problem with email. That just means it's a colder medium, and it's just not what moves people. We know, though, that people who are getting your emails become more responsive to direct mail, and that is all part of the relationship. In fact, we have some evidence that people who are on your email list and never open your emails are responding better on the mail. So it's almost like being in their inbox and not even being read is something you need to do to, to you know, stay in their mind and be part of their life. Mm. Yeah, I think I, that's a great point because you know, we hear a lot of talk about multi-channel fundraising, and a lot of it, there, it doesn't really exist in a lot of organizations. And I think maybe that is... That wasn't in our paper, but I think is part of the future of fundraising is really uh, yeah. making that multi-channel opportunity real. Yeah, it is. And you know, what's, what's a little surprising to me is that direct mail is better at driving people online than vice versa. In other words, in fact, direct mail is the best way to get online gifts because you get people that get the thing in the mail, they get all that warmth and involvement, but they are used to doing transactions online, so they go online and do it. Right. Right. Surprise. Who would have thought? But it's, it's a very big deal. In fact, if direct mail went out of existence today, I think online would too. Mm. That's it's, important. it's so important. Very interesting. And, and we do see, I mean, I think it's very marginal now, but there's people who say, you know, direct mail's dead or 
or dying. I think that uh, things are changing, but the reality for most organizations that do direct mail is that's a much bigger source of fun. It is. Well, uh, it, direct mail is somewhere, what, 10 to 12 percent, uh, excuse me, uh, online giving is 10 to 12 percent of charitable giving. Right. In that sense, it's almost unimportant. Um, but I don't want to say that it's not important. It's very important, and it's getting more important all the time. But it may not be the best way for gifts to come in, but you better be doing it because it's a way people will get involved with you. Right. Um, so I want to, uh, you know, one thing that we talked a little bit about in our paper was about personalization and the idea of really trying to speak to people as an individual and see people as individuals as much as you can. And that's something, obviously, you get at the major donor level you know, which is, I'm going to talk to this person. Um, how does that play out for you in terms of low-dollar donors, and how do you think that, you know, where, where, do, you, where do you put that, the idea of, of either, and it may be personalization around your name, but it may also be about the kind of content you get or the frequency of, of things yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah. I think the, the more, more important than using the name is sending the relevant content. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, in, in direct mail, in testing, there are frequent tests where a non-personalized piece does better than a personalized piece. Um, and more often than not, in that kind of testing situation, there's not a difference. So throwing someone's name onto a piece of direct mail is not magic. It's not something you must do. Um, there are different cases where you, you, know, you should or, or there's cases where you shouldn't. So I, I will say, you know, I hear this a lot, that, boy, you've got to use your name or you're in trouble. No, it's not, not really the case. What matters is that you know enough about them that you're sending something they care about. And that's the real personalization. They'll overlook the fact that you're calling them friend rather than uh, Mr. Hoffman if you're sending them something they want. Mm. I think that's a great point. You know, we've done some experimentation and, and work around personalization in video that's shown a really high lift um, uh, in fundraising, but again, yeah. I think it's very dependent on 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 those things and testing, as you said. It's um, you know there are these senses like we have to do this, we have to do that. No, you actually have to do what works, right? Uh, and and do more of that. Yeah, the, the only thing you can count on that you better do or you're in trouble is you need to have meaningful calls to action that they want to do. That's the one thing you must do, and there's no way around that. Actually, let me take that back. There is a way around that, and that is to be um, top of mind in their mind. In that case, you can almost send them a piece of blank paper and they're going to respond. Most of us are not in that situation where we can do that. So we need to say, here's something you can do that makes the world a better place, that supports your values, and makes you feel good. You do that. Um, there's a lot of other techniques you can, or you might or might not do, but that's the one that matters. Great. Well, I want to wrap up just with uh, your thoughts around, you know, it's 2015, um, uh, you know, what would you tell somebody? It's the beginning of the year. They, everybody went through the year-end, you know, cycle. There's planning in this Q1 time frame. You know, what are what would you tell fundraisers today? Just about how to think about this year, how to do better. Uh, you know, what would you? What would the one piece of advice be uh, that you give to the fundraisers out there? Huh. Maybe I'll give you two. Okay. One would be and this is not for everybody, but it's for almost everybody, connect with your donors more. Um, most people are not doing it enough. They're, they're so infrequent in their direct mail, their email, whatever, you know, the various ways they contact, that the donors are kind of forgetting they're there. Whatever you're doing can probably add to it. Okay, this is for everybody. Some people are really at the limit, but most people are not even close to uh, being part of their donor's life. Now, they, they're that way because you get complaints when you communicate more. Um, but you, you know, get used to it. Um, doing the job right means you're going to get some complaints, and you want to be smart. Turn those complaints into a relationship. Whole other topic of conversation. Uh, the other one that worries me a lot that people don't do and need to do is get their offline and online communication and branding together. Um, I think that is an absolutely critical thing that's going to matter every day more. <laughs> um, right now, there's a lot of organizations where the offline channel is run in one silo of the organization, and the online is in another silo. 
And the online people say, well, this is how we want to look, and they're all slick and modern and online-y. And the direct mail people are, are kind of junky and old-fashioned and direct mail -y, you know. Um, and when you do that, you are losing gifts because people are crossing the lines both directions. Mm -hmm. And we've seen evidence that when you make your online channel look like your direct mail channel, online giving goes way up. And there's probably two reasons for that. One is that people are coming from the mail to showing up online, and if your site doesn't look like the piece of mail in their hand, they're going to think, oh, well, I'm in the wrong place. But two, the junky look of mail and print and those things, they work. They're that way for a reason. They've been tested for years and years and years. They change, but they change slowly because we have to change with the donors, which is more slowly than we want to. And I think online, we've moved, some of us have moved way too far beyond where real donors really are. So I, you know, I would say, you know, all you people who are running websites and direct and email programs is look at your direct mail and be that way. I know it hurts. Doesn't, it doesn't look nice, but it's going to work a lot better if you do that. That's great. That's a really interesting advice, and I appreciate it. Jeff, I really appreciate you joining us uh, on this chat, and uh, hopefully we'll have an opportunity to do more of this. Everyone, please uh, check out uh, Jeff's uh, future Fundraising Now blog. You can sign up where you get an email uh, every day with the content there, which is how I receive it. It's terrific. And check out C3's future fundraising white paper. Um, and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Great talking to you.